aka Fine Art at NIA. Nice to meet you. I'm Mrs. Swain and I'm the at NIA. So what I'm going to do today is I'm going to take you through a little presentation which will tell you a little bit more about what you might be expected to do, what kind of things will be there to help you, who your teachers are and what the art department looks a bit like at NIA. Getting you ready for when you will join us in September. So tell you a little bit about myself to start with. I took sculpture and printmaking when I was at art college and now I have a real passion for textiles. I'm always up for learning something new and I love new skills and ideas and I'm always looking for new things to improve my own set of skills. I'm going to tell you about my colleagues and how they, who they are and what they like to do and then there's a little task at the end that I'd like you to complete. Now you can spend as long a time as you like on this but I would like you to bring it with you in September for us to have a look at. So here we go, I'm going to show and share the information with you. So there we go. This is Miss Filler. She's a very experienced member of the department and me and Miss Filler have worked together for a very long time. We were previously in a school together as well. She has a great um, breadth of skills, particularly in clay and three dimensions, but we are both very much rounded. We both teach full right from primary all the way to secondary and that is one of the most exciting things about our job, moving from one thing to another. The other member of our staff is Miss Smith and she joined us last year. She's got a passion for um, painting in particular. Now Miss Smith will be helping you with your painting in sixth form and me and Miss Fuller will be taking a lead on your teaching. What have the students said this year? Well they've come to NIA all fresh out of their GCSEs, not knowing anyone coming into the sixth form but they've settled very well and they've done a huge amount of different things. They've loved what they've been doing, they've been supported, and they've been encouraged. And I look forward to being with them when you come to us. So why should you study art? Well, the first option is study art because you are going to take it for a career. I've put in some little clips there for you to watch to give you some ideas. But there are so many different types of art that you can study, it's incredible. Could you be a fine artist, a forensic artist, go into the world of fashion? Who knows? It's up to you to decide. But if you intend to take art just up to A level, it does give you a vast amount of different skills. It's a really good balance to your academic subjects. It develops a different style of your learning. It helps you with your emotional intelligence, understanding how people think and feel and how they express that. It's great in your fact that you will need to work independently. Get yourself organised and be able to set tasks yourself. Creative thinking is of course highly sought after by lots of employers in a wide variety of areas and art is of course very suitably um, situated to do that. It also is very good for you as a person. It helps you tap into your mind, body and soul and helps you understand other people and yourself. And in the end it's all about you. It helps you with your decision making, reflect any any positive decisions or difficult decisions you have to make, it helps you evaluate your work and progress on it. So how is the course split? You have two main elements to your A-level art. You have your personal investigation, which is done in class, a bit like coursework, and you have your externally set assignment, which is your exam element. Your personal investigation is most of your marks at 60% and the exam is 40%. And your personal investigation is one thorough unit of work, which is an in-depth research into a topic. Now you will get to choose that topic. It's totally up to you what you decide to investigate, and we'll support you and help you with that. The exam is set by the exam board, and then we will obviously consider what is the best way forward for you to tackle that. There are four assessment objectives, and this is very similar to how GCSE art was assessed. You have number one, which is looking at contextual situations and artists. Number two is exploring your resources and media and experimenting with things and refining your ideas and working out what to do. Three is recording, photography, drawing, writing, brainstorms, and working out how you're going to do things, why you did things, and pushing your work forward. And assessment objective number four 
is what you present as your response or end piece or end pieces or stop points within your project. When you come to NIA, this is what you will do in your first year. For the first term up till Christmas, you'll be doing media workshops ranging through a wide variety of things. Some you might have done before, some you might not have ever tried. If you've already got skills in an area, we'll push your skills forward and help you refine them. If you've never tried something before, we're then going to give you that information that you need to improve, your, um, to improve what you do. The workshops will go between one and two weeks in length, and at the end we'll have a, a group crit, which will involve you putting your work out or up on the wall, and then we'll all go for a walk around and have a conversation about it. This will seem a bit strange to start with, but you'll get used to it quite quickly. After Christmas in January, you'll then begin to plan your personal investigation. You'll decide on your topic. You'll start sourcing artists and inspiration and gathering lots of information together to get you, get you in the right frame of mind. We'll then pick a start point and we'll get started. So from February onwards, it's very self-directed with support from your teachers. You'll be working independently and you'll be reviewing and planning your work every week. And we give you some things to help you with that. One of them is what we call a RAG. RAG stands for red, amber, green. And it will be a list, basically, of all the different things you plan to do for your personal investigation. And we'll colour code that red if you haven't started it yet, amber if you have but still have more to do, and green if that task has been completed. And this will be updated about every two weeks with you on a one-to-one -one basis with your teacher. And it will show a great track of how you've progressed, what speed you are progressing at, and where your project is going. You'll also have feedback, feedback books, which we'll have in class to write notes in, any feedback verbally from us as well, so you can keep track of what we've talked about. Each week we'll give you a planning sheet, and you'll plan out what you're going to do, so that you know exactly what task is for which day of the week. This will also help you with your homework, as that will then fit in and fit onto this planning sheet. We've got a few different ones you can pick from. And where will I work? Well, these are some photographs of the studio taken a few months ago. Each student has their own desk and each student is expected to put their work up on the wall. And it will look a little bit like this. Now, this is currently the year 12 studio, but from September, it will be the sixth form studio and you will all have a space within this room, but plenty of space within it. There's also a big table in the middle that we use for any kind of workshop thing or things that we're doing as a group. Outside of the class, or outside of all of the classes, is the gallery space, a comfortable place to come and sit. Work is put out there. Classes will go out and look at books. Things are stored. All sorts of things happen in the gallery space. And what will you have to use? Well, on top of your personal private study space, you'll have a wide variety of specialist equipment. Yeah, we have a brand new printing press, which has just arrived. We obviously have sinks and space for you to use within the class, a kiln and a potter's wheel, and of course, your class is open for you to use before and after school, giving you a private study space. You also have the opportunity to support us in our lower school lessons if you're interested and have that side of things you'd like to experiment with. Before you come, it's useful to have some basic equipment, and I'm sure most of you will have all of this anyway. So some pencils, a putty rubber, some coloured pencils, pens and fine liners and all that kind of thing. Gather it all together and if you've got a box you can put it in or a bag, please do that. But it's better if you've got your own things that you're used to using rather than just cons uh, constantly borrowing bits and pieces. We will give you the majority of the things that you need, but pencils and rubbers are kind of something you need yourself. On top of some practical equipment, every week you need to come with a few other things, an open mind, being willing to take risks and try out new things because not everything is going to work. And if it doesn't work out as expected, why doesn't it work? Can I do something to improve it? What else can I do? Be curious to explore these things. And on top of that, have some good time management. Those skills will help you with. Now, before you come and throughout the course, things that will be helpful. Draw, just draw, draw anything, everything, all the time in whatever media you can or have with you. Keep it in a sketchbook and it'll end up being a bit like a diary of what you've been and done over the summer. Experiment with things. 
straw, stick, glue, test, scribble. And if you find that all a little bit frightening and you're very neat and tidy, get a, get, get a wreck this journal. And on those pages, you can experiment and try things out and you can loosen up your skills ready to tackle the A-level. Take photographs and look, look at what's around you. Sometimes people miss things which are incredibly interesting. Collect those images. You don't know when you might need them. Watch anything and everything you can find about art. Dip in and out. Do you like this? Do you not like this? Is this interesting to you? Sky Arts is a great place to start with things like Portrait Artist of the Year and Landscape Artist of the Year. And of course, Grace and Perry's Art Club has been on recently, and I find that very interesting. Visit some galleries and art shows, big and small, wherever you can find. If there's a local art show going on in your village or in your local area, go and have a look. See what you think. Make judgments. Decide what you could do differently, what works well. And if you can't get yourself out and about to a real gallery, that's fine, because most of them will have virtual tours online that you can dip in and out of. And here we've got a list of some galleries to get you started. There's so much out there on the internet for you to look at. It is almost overwhelming. Find out what you like. Make decisions about why. So here we go. We get to the part now where you're going to do a little task. So you need to get your resources ready. You need a variety of things, some old envelopes or letters, bits of newspaper maybe, scissors, some glue, all sorts of pens and pencils and so on. Now over the next few slides, you need to stop and start after you've been introduced to the task, complete it, and then move on. I'd maybe suggest you look at the whole task in a one-up, then go back and get started, and then you know exactly what you've got to do. So here we go. Gather your things. This is what I've collected. I've got bits of tinfoil, cards, magazines, a collection of pens and pencils I've scrabbled around with. Anything and everything. And this is your first artist you're going to look at. All the tasks are linked to an artist. And you'll also find that I've put on a clip from YouTube on each slide for you to go and find out a little bit more. Mark Powell does some very skilled biro drawings. But what you want to take note of here is what he's drawing upon. We have some postcards, envelopes, maps, posted envelopes, bit of music. I want you to create a background before we draw anything. So here we go. This is what I scavenged up. A bit of Amazon wrapping and some envelopes. And I tore one sticker on the other to create my background, wanting to have all those stickers and marks on that background that will come through as I work. That's your first task, off you go. Your next task is looking at line and looking at portrait. So we have got two artists to look at. The first is Gary Hume, a contemporary artist. And what you do, what you think of here is the way that the faces are overlapping and you're starting to have to decipher the image. This is one approach you can take. Our second artist is Picasso. And Picasso's continuous line drawing. Now, I do suggest if you want to do a continuous portrait line drawing, you do look at the clip that I've added in because it would be really beneficial to you. So it's a portrait then, and it's in line. I've taken a couple of photographs of myself on my phone. I started on the left by sketching this on, on pencil. I rummaged about and found some pens. I've used black, all of different sizes. And then I've inked in my portrait. And on the right, you can see I've also added a second portrait of myself peeping out from the back. What I want you to consider as you're adding some line in is the thickness of each line. And you can see in the close up, my glasses have a much thicker line. The line does change from thick to thin, and my ear is a much thinner line. This is quality of line. Consider this when you're drawing. Our next artist is Jasper Johns. You're going to add some numbers onto your work. Those numbers are going to end up being slightly more jumbled, and you're going to look and consider each space that you have developed within those overlapping numbers. I've chosen three numbers that are important to me, 50, 47, and three. You can clearly see the 50 on the left-hand side. If you look closely, you'll also be able to see the 47 overlapping on top of this. And the three I've put in the top right hand corner to balance. I have started to work up those sections individually 
and look at the lettering forms as the lines overlap and cross. Now we have another artist to look at when we come to lettering. Bernheim. He's a graffiti artist who loves a message and he likes to put his letters in slightly different formats. And I've used this in my work. I've written the word inspire. I put it next to my numbers. And I've written it in the style of Bernheim. And you can now see on the right in particular with this segment of work, I've really started to work up each individual segment, not just looking at the number as a whole. You can now far more clearly see the number seven, for example. Our next element is collage. So collage essentially is cutting and sticking, but it is what you cut, how you stick that is important. So we have an artist called Richard Hamilton on the left, a very influential pop artist. But on the right, the two artists are from Instagram. So if you want to go and look them up, you can. What you're going to do is you images onto your work. I went and had a little rummage around and find a few bits. I've added them on. And the things that are important to me, like a bit of a tea box and some little pictures. And of course, you have the masked figure and a cat is quite important. Balance the pictures, move them around on your work before you glue them down. Our last element to add is pattern. And I've added three completely different artists on here for you to be inspired by. I do suggest you watch the videos before you begin to give you some ideas. So I'm gonna finish my work off by adding a balance of pattern. And it's totally up to you to decide what patterns to use and where to put them. You may be inspired by the artists that you see, or you maybe create your own. Oh, I had to have a tea break too. But I got quite involved with my patterns. I was looking at this idea of repetition and of shadow lines and so on. And I was starting to work up and build up my lines and patterns onto my work. And finally, this is what I ended up with. I have to confess, I did sit and play with this for quite a while and I did enjoy spending a little bit of time on it. It's up to you how long you spend on it. You decide. But I would like you to bring it with you in September and we'll see as a starting point what you've created. I'm really looking forward to starting at NIA. Any questions, please email the school and I'm more than happy to get back to you. Enjoy your drawing. Enjoy your summer. Use your eyes. Have a great time. Goodbye.